Hello there guys, my name is John from Donk TCG and today we're going to be playing Tapu Coco with Weavile in a spread format. This is a really, really fun deck. I think that I've been playing a lot at League and something that is becoming apparent is that Strain of Punishments is a really, really good card, guys. It's a really good card. So let me dive into this deck profile and then we'll get some games. The deck runs the full copy of 4, if I've... Yep, there you go. Four Tapu Coco Baby. Only really going to be focusing on the flying flip attack. One double colorless energy. And basically all we're going to be doing is 20 damage to each of our opponent's Pokemon. Building up that damage for later turns. We're going to play four Sneasel and then a 2-2 split of Weavile. Two of the uh, Burning Shadows Weavile with Rule of Evil. Done 60 damage to each Pokemon that has an ability. And the Evil Admonition... Weavile from Ultra Prism, just going to punish players that put down too many abilities. Evil Admonition coming in, doing 50 times the number of abilities on your opponent's side of the field, so it can have real big numbers. We're also going to play one Buzzwall, just for Sledgehammer, nice, easy way to get some damage out on the board. And then the star of the show, Tapu Lele um, Baby, will do... For Sai, we're going to be focusing on both of their attacks, actually. So Magical Swap is the main one here. Move all of the damage counters on your opponent's side of the field in any way you like. So it means we can get all the damage down on the board and then just take the knockouts that we need to take. And then Psy Wave does 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's Pokemon. This main mainly will be using this to knock out Rayquaza GX. Rayquaza GX with 3 energy on it. Can be knocked out with a Tapu Lele with one energy and a choice band. Thanks to that fairy weakness, of course. And we are going to play one Oranguru. For some reason, this deck really, really, really likes Oranguru. There's something about just being able to get that one and extra card out of your deck every now and again with Instruct. It's just so, so good. You have to be very careful, though. You don't really want to knock it out with Rule of Evil, but... <laughs> It's one of those, because Rule of Evil will affect your Pokemon as well. Going on to the item cards, we're going to have 4 Shrine of Punishment, doing 10 damage to each Pokemon GX and EX, both yours and your opponent's, between turns. Really, really helps build up the damage, making those numbers very, very... I won't say easy to hit, but easier to hit. Very, very, very good card, very good card. We're going to play 4 Counter Catcher. We're omitting um, Guzma from this deck completely. A lot of our Pokemon have free retreat or 1 retreat. So Counter Catcher then becomes just infinitely better because it doesn't take up our supporter for the turn. So we can do things like Cynthia into Counter Catcher and bring up something and just get your opponent stuck and maybe bring up something like a Malamar or something like that and just then keep spreading out the damage. Uh, ball Counts. We're going to have 4 Nest Ball. And three Ultra Ball. Uh, apart from that, pretty simple the rest of the deck. You know, it's just supporters. Uh, four Cynthia, three Judge, four Lily, two Tate and Liza, and one Copycat. Um, two Choice Band, just helps build up the numbers again. And two Rescue Stretcher. As for energy, we're going to play four Unit Energy, allowing us to pay the cost of Sledgehammer, of Evil Admonition, and of Psy Wave on Tapu Lele but can also be used as just a blank energy for something like Tapu Coco's Electric Ball Attack if we ever need to use that or even um, Buzz will Swing Around would work you know it's it kind of it's nice to just have that energy I'm going to play three counter energy these will mostly serve as additional DCE um, for Tapu Coco, but obviously attaching one of these to Tapu Lele will allow it to use Magical Swap, and then four double colourless energy. Nice and simple, guys. Let's get into the deck. Let's get a game here. Looks like we're playing against Rayquaza, and that's a very, very good matchup for us. Rayquaza has started adding in the Delmise, uh, which can make this a little bit trickier. However, if my opponent benches a lot of Rayquazas early on in the game, this could be a real, real easy match for us. Uh, not the greatest of starts for us. We're going to drop the Sneasel into the active. Uh, we are going second. I will just keep my hand as is. If he shuffles away my Buzzwall for whatever reason, 
so be it. I don't really want to play down the buzzwall this turn. This isn't Rayquaza, this is Dragonite. Okay. Now this matchup I have not done. I have not played this match. So let's see what we can do here. An extra card for us is going to find an Ultra Ball and we're going to pass turn. So the Latios is going to start 50 times each evolved Dragon Pokemon. This is going to be really interesting actually. Getting down Shrine of Punishment seems very, very good. Uh, when he has all his Dragonites out, this could be great for us. A Dragonair goes into the discard. Mysterious Treasure is going to find him guessing another Dratini. Here we go. Signs of Evolution. Search your deck for Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite. Should reveal them and put them in your hand. Okay. This one has 30 damage. Okay. 70 HP Dratini, 60 HP Dratini. It's fine. Here comes a Tapu Lele. Not a lot of abilities on my opponent's side of the field. That's unfortunate. And a Lily going to draw my opponent right all the way up to eight cards. Great first turn from my opponent if he's looking to set up. This is good. Do you even want to bench another Dratini at this point? I don't think you do because surely you want to go Lance Prism Star. Gets Oranguru down. Okay. So we get the Tapu Koko. That's absolutely fantastic. That's exactly what we want. I'm going to Ultra Ball. Maybe do we want to keep Buzzwall around? Yeah, I think we probably do. So that means we're going to discard Tate and Liza. And unfortunately, I think a Counter Catcher has to go. Yeah. But it's really important for us to find some of our cards here. Uh, Sneasel is probably not going to be all that great in this one, actually, if he's not got a whole lot of abilities. Maybe just grab another Tapu Koko. Or Anguru is prized. And one DCE is prized. Choice Band's prized. An Ultra Ball. Nothing too bad. Um, he's going to take quite a few turns to build up his damage, though. So we need to get an energy off of this. Uh, shuffle. DCE would be great. Shrine of Punishments is there. Um, I don't really want to play Shrine of Punishments down right now. He's only got one GX on the field. We didn't hit an energy, unfortunately. And at this, I think I have to pass. We can drop another Sneasel, actually. We'll drop another Sneasel just in case this one goes down. And then we'll pass turn to him. No, I like this deck. This is cool. Um, it does have two abilities on the field, which isn't that great for us. I would like to see another one, because then 150 damage really starts to add up. With things like Evil Admonition on the field and uh, Rule of Evil. We can really put out some numbers, but so be it. Going to be looking to evolve this Sneasel to retreat it for free and then get a DCE down on the Tapu Koko. My opponent has six cards in hand. We can copycat up to six, which is not so bad. Five cards in hand. Hopefully he keeps some of these around. Shuffle draw five doesn't seem too great, but it's going to be our only option. And my opponent not... After that explosive first start hasn't really done that much. A nest ball's gonna come down though. What's he gonna grab? Another Dratini? No, he's just gonna miss. That was clearly just a search. We're gonna have to drop Shrine of Punishments. Ah, right, that's kind of unfortunate actually. So I could bench Tapu Coco now. I wanna keep these Tapu Lilies around because they're gonna do lots of damage later on. Should have used Nest Ball first, shouldn't I? Should have used Nest Ball just to burn it. Uh, but Copycat, Shuffle Draw 4, we get Evil Admonition, Weavile, we can do 100 damage. Doesn't seem awful. Um, unfortunately, Evil Admonition doesn't have free retreat. So, 100 damage seems okay though. I was wanting to attack with Tapu Koko, but we unfortunately didn't get DCE. No, this, this isn't so bad. This isn't so bad. 
what is my opponent looking to do here? He needs like rare candy Dragonite. That that's he really needs to start going off. He's clearly not relying on Lance Prism Star though, which is crazy to me. Surely that's the point is to use Lance Prism Star and then Dragonite's GX attack to get more dragons on the field and build up your bench that way. Now, Latios is doing absolutely no damage at the moment, so I'm not too worried about that. Opponent having a good think here. Is my opponent still there? <laughs> we take out Latios this turn. Oh, here we go. Another Tapu Lele comes down. Now we're talking. My opponent has been forced here to play another ability. And with 150 damage coming out of my Evil Admonition, we're doing some real nice numbers. Uh, getting another Evil Admonition up would be lovely. Um, and even Rule of Evil is going to be doing super good damage because it does 60 to each. And Volkner are going to find him in Item and a Lightning Energy. So I'm guessing this is where we see Dragonite coming out. But he attached here, didn't he? Rare Candy, Lightning Energy, and... Is this Dragonite? Mysterious Treasure. Jeez. My opponent really having to work for it here. He gets the Dragonite. Here we go. Now, I'm not 100% sure of the energy cost here. Let me see the Dragonite. So, Dragonite. Giga Impact. 200 can't attack next turn. Put three Dragon Pokemon from your discard pile onto your bench. So switch. Here comes Dragonite. Going to be able to Dragon Claw for 70 damage here. Yeah, it's 250 HP. That's crazy. Shrine of Punishment is going to really, really help me out here. We'd only find a Nest Ball, unfortunately. Um, I need to keep this energy in hand, don't I? I'm going to just need the rule of... I'm going to need the Evil Admonition. I don't have another play. Um, unfortunately, with Orangura being prized, we're in a really tough spot. A nice amount of damage on the field already. There's 30, 50, 150, 320 damage on the board already. And when the numbers start adding up like that, like... Magical Swap is taking like a good amount of prizes. You're almost taking like four prizes here. Just knocking out Lele's. And you see like the the numbers don't have to be super high to start getting knockouts either because you can take knockouts on things like a Dratini, the rest of that Latios, you know, and, and build up the damage like that. Right. So Weavell goes down, which is kind of bad, but we have we have options now. We have the counter catcher, we have the nest ball, and we have Lily. Excellent. Okay. So, ideally here, we keep this damage around off on the field. I'm going to counter catcher up Oranguru to force my opponent to have to switch next turn. I'm going to nest ball to bring out another Sneasel. I'm going to keep this energy in hand. I'm not 100% happy with it, but we'll Lily. We get counter energy. Excellent. So now that we have counter energy, we can fly and flip. And really start to pressure my opponent now. Look at the amount of damage coming out on the board. One more fly and flip and two more ticks of Shrine of Punishment and this thing's gone. And it's on the bench. He's struggling to get it back out. He has. To, there comes another Dragonite. Here we go. And my opponent swings back, even if he knocks out the Tapu Koko, we've got we've got other things that he has to be worried about now. And a Guzma comes down, taking out the Buzzwall. And Buzzwall gonna he's just gonna Dragon Claw for 70 damage. We're really okay with that. Shrine of Punishment is gonna build up on this thing. I can attack with Buzzwall, it's only gonna do 30 damage. There's Rule of Evil Weavile, that's exactly what we want to see. Unfortunately, we don't have a switching option for Buzzwall here. I think I'm going to have to attack with Buzzwall, unfortunately. And I will Lily. We need to now try and work out... Yeah, there's another counter catcher. Excellent. So we can counter catcher. We don't want to just do 30 damage here. So we can counter catcher this. And put another 60 damage on the board. 
forcing him once again to find a switching card. And then the Shrine of Punishment's damage coming out again. Look at the damage being spread on the board. This is how we want to play these games. That Dragonite is looking real, real close to being knocked out. And then after that, we only need four prizes. And there's enough damage on the board to just sweep up four prizes straight away, I think. 90 damage here, 80 damage here. That together would knock out a Lele. He only needs 20 more damage. We could put 20 from here to here. That would knock that out. So we could take three prizes off the board straight away. And Oranguru is getting close too. There's the switch card as well. Wow. He just finds the complete switch. That's amazing. I, I'm impressed by my opponent. I must admit. that That is incredible. So I'm noticing now that Rule of Evil is going to take big damage here. So Rule of Evil gets this thing to a knockout and that will be close and now we can take a knockout here we can actually take a big big turn here if we rule of evil we knock out this this will be close that will be that'll knock out and then dragonite gets knocked out on the way to the turn we can possibly win the match here we knock this out that's going to be knocked out by shrine we knock this out that'll be 10 off okay we're going to take three prizes here seems the best way to play this game taking all these prize cards off the board we're gonna not bench this because we want to be able to move damage counters next turn and there we go we've got some cards down here the tapu lele on the bench seems smarter because we have the rescue stretcher if he do does want to knock it out we'll retreat into the rule of evil weevil and look at this, look at this. So we're taking a knockout here. That's one prize. We get our, our Anguru. Shrine of Punishment could finish the game for us already. Shrine of Punishment's taking another four prize cards right here. And this is why spread is so good right now, guys. Look at the amount of damage that is racked up on my opponent's side of the field. And how many prizes we just took in one turn. We knocked out Dragonite. We knocked out Tapu Lele. And we knocked out Oranguru. Now, he has to do something about Shrine of Punishments. He has to do something about Tapu Lele. He has very little options left. If Shrine of, if he just passes turn, without getting rid of Shrine of Punishments, he loses the game. We only have to do 10 damage to this Tapu Lele. So, oh, he gets the Fuel Blower. So he has actually managed to win out this turn. But he now has to knock out Weavile. He has to knock out Tapu Coco. He has way, way, way too much he has to do. And a max potion on Tapu Lele. I was not expecting to see that. So all we need to do is flying flip. We need to knock out this Latios now. This is our key to victory. And my opponent sees that. There you go. That was a real good showcase of our deck for our first game. Let's get some more. Let's try another good match here with Spread. Fighting Fire. It's, it's Buzz my cargo, probably. Uh... I missed the other types over there. I think there was a normal type in there, which suggests Oranguru. These matches can be tough. Uh, we don't have a great matchup against Buzzwall Garb. Um, so we'll see how this goes. If it's Buzzwall GX, do we have a better matchup? Possibly? I'm not 100% sure. Probably not. We start Baby Coco. And really, we're just going to be looking to get Sneasels down and take big knockouts with Weavile's. That's really the only thing we can do. Tough match. Tough match. But we'll see how this goes. It is Buzzwall GX. So we can do some Shrine of Punishments damage, which is something. And there's another... There's a, Oranguru is good to see. Because we like getting these abilities down on the field. The abilities are how we win the match. Is it just Buzzwall Lycanroc or is it... Here comes up Slugma. My opponent thinking my cargo. Hopefully he gets that down because that's another ability on the field. And I've turn one judge from my opponent. How rude. How rude can you be? And we can judge my opponent straight back, but that's not going to do much for us. Ah, this is a terrible start. Okay, we're going to pop down this strain of punishments. Don't really want to attach counter energy right now, so we'll Cynthia in the hope of 
better days. And we miss energy. That's frustrating. Show me the monkey. The monkey is here. The monkey is here. That's good. I'm going to need to try and instruct for an energy that's so bad. Oh, I don't want to discard this Weavile. I think we're just going to need to take a turn without damaging. And that sucks. Cause I don't want to do that. I'm not willing to get rid of this hand though. I need the cards in this hand. Their Shrine of Punishment is going to do that. 10 damage. We'll see if the extra 60 damage matters in the long run. It possibly will. Uh, but the Buzzwall is going to start spreading damage all on, all on his own. And that's going to be becoming an issue. Gets rid of 2 baby Buzzwall. For the my cargo. I don't know if I agree with that. Bumps my Shrine of Punishment with his Brooklet Hill. Here comes Diancy. That's another ability on the field, guys. His abilities are building up. That's three abilities. It's 150 damage. If I can get energy and um, that card, what's it called? Um, um, choice band. I can knock out this Buzzwall straight up. Instruct, draw him three cards. He's going to get himself a supporter. And there comes Professor Kukui. Going to deal 120 damage to my Tapu Coco. That's a problem. Knocks out my Coco. It's not the end of the world. We, you kind of expect it. I'm going to be able to Lily to draw some cards here. Does he realise how much damage I'm doing to this thing? I don't think he does. Let's see. Get another Coco. That's good. Put the wee veil down. I want to quickly check how many energies and choice bands do I have. I've got one choice band. Brutal. Let's instruct for one before we Lily. We get Cynthia. I would rather six new cards. We get it. Oh, wow. Now there's a turn. So we take away the big threat that's on the board right now. There goes the Buzzwall, guys. 180 damage with Evil Admonition. And we're ahead on prizes right now. We get the other choice band and we get a Counter Energy. Counter Energy going to be a bit useless right now. However, look at my opponent's board. He doesn't really have anything going for him right now. Um... We've got all these counter catchers and stuff on the field as well, or in our hand as well, which kind of doesn't do much for us at the moment. And unfortunately with this deck, like, because we don't play Guzma, we can't then bring up something like the Micargo and really start to punish it. We can only really take knockouts. Seldomly. So there's the Buzz, baby Buzzwall, getting an energy. Does he have good, oh, he has smooth over. So yeah, he has Guzma if he wants it. Assuming he can get rid of some cards in his hand. But then what do you go for? Because my Weavile can just knock out anything next turn as well. He's going to Acro Bike. Discards a Guzma, that's a pretty unfortunate for him. Switch, there goes Buzzwall. Oh, yeah, there goes Weavile. That's a shame. That's a shame, but we had a good turn there. We had a good turn. Now, I can fly and flip. Um, I need to get another Sneasel down. But I don't want to discard any of this. It's really tough. It's really tough. Um, I'm going to need to attach DCE here. Uh, there's no point in attaching Choice Band. Oh, this really sucks. Ultra Ball is going to hurt me here. I don't want to get rid of Choice Band. I can't get rid of Lily. I can't get I can't get rid of two Counter Catcher. Is it Counter Energy? Nah, I'll need to get rid of Choice Band. I can't get rid of another Counter Energy. They're going to be so important later on in the match. 
And this will allow us to Lily for four. Not awful pulls here. Let's have a quick look in our deck. See what we can still grab. Do have two Shrine of Punishments left. We don't have that many draw supporters left. Good amount of energy left as well. That's fine. Shrine of Punishments will come down. And we'll flying flip. Oh, that that was a that was an awesome turn. However, my opponent now just runs through me with a sledgehammer. Um, I can, if he takes a knockout here, I can knock out with Weavile again, and also judge him. But because we're weak, it's really really tough. There's really not a whole lot we can do. We expect to lose a prize every turn. That's the thing with this deck. You kind of expect to lose a prize most turns. However, it's still tough. Lily for three. You're going to find him anything he needs. He gets the rock rough and an energy onto it. And a sledgehammer will come down and knock out. Coco, 280 damage, nice. Now unfortunately, I'm going to have to commit a lot here. I need to commit the Weavile. I need to do this. This this is the play. I need to now knock out his Buzzwole. I can counter catch her. Is that going to help me? Not really. The Lycanroc does suck. Hold on, if, I, if he sledgehammers me next turn, he'll only do 60, he'll do 100 damage. So he'll still knock out Weavile. The Lycanroc would really, really suck though. Ugh. Let's just judge him. I need, to, I need to get that off the field. I need to get some cards out of his hand, rather. So there's the Nest Ball. We can get another Weavile down. Another Sneasel. We don't have... We obviously don't have any Evil Admonition left, but we do have Rescue Stretchers still in deck, so that's something. And the Counter Catcher will allow... Uh, the Counter Energy will allow us to knock out with Evil Admonition. Now, this this is a different way of playing the deck because um, my opponent has such aggression in front of us. We have to really respond with our own aggression. So he's going to be able to smooth over, get the Lycan Rock. He'll be able to knock out anything on my field. He'll probably choose to just knock out the Weavile, obviously. That seems like the smartest play. However, can we? We can't actually knock out the Rock Ruff. Ah, that's or the Lycan Rock, which does suck. So we'll need to play around that and perhaps try to knock out these guys. We can actually do some Rule of Evils. And that's possibly the way we go about this game now. Um, we try to rule of evil twice and knock out the three of these guys on the bench. How many counter catcher do we have left? We have three left total. I think there's one prized. A Guzma comes down. He's going to take out his aggression on my Sneasel. Uh, and maybe my opponent noticed that we could do quite well with the rule of evil here because Sneasel is our route to rule of evil obviously so that's a bit of a problem another rock rough does come down onto the field and a jet punch is going to knock out Sneasel and damage my tap at Coco not great not a great turn um, we've not been able to spread a lot to make this matter so what do we do here we rescue stretcher back these two do we rescue stretcher back the two sneasel and the weavile i mean how many counter catcher do we have we have three okay so i need to rescue stretcher and we'll shuffle back the sneasels and the weavile they're clearly the most important cards in our deck. I need to keep the unit energy around. We can bench the Tapu Lele. And then we can 
Cynthia for six. We need to hit Sneasels. We get the Sneasel, we miss energy though. Our route to winning is knocking out these three. So what I want to do is... I can... I can counter catcher. I can counter catcher and knock out Diancy. I could do that now, couldn't I? Yeah, let's do that. We're going to counter catcher and knock out Diancy. This seems like a good way to spend our turn. And then... We just need one GX knockout after that. Oh, this is so tough. Evil Admonition. Unfortunately, this reduces the damage of our Evil Admonition. However, my opponent has to knock us out twice. And Jet Punch only does 60 damage to me now. Because we got rid of Diancy. So it leaves my opponent in a trickier situation. We have used up another counter catcher now. It's... This is tricky. This is really, really tricky. There's only 40 damage on the board. I need to get more damage on the board. What's our DCE count like? I've only used one. DC, we can fly and flip. Put 100 damage on the board. That gets us our Anguru, and then we could. We need to fly and flip twice, essentially. I think he has to lose a turn. He has to not knock us out one turn. Playing against our weakness is really, really hard. We need extra turns. The rule of evil would be lovely. If we could hit that twice. I think if... If the, the, the game allows it, he would knock out this now. I'll evolve this one into the Rule of Evil Weavile. Spread 60 damage here and here, and then rescue stretcher back a Sneasel and try to hit that again the following turn. Because Rule of Evil's our safest way to do it. And he gets the beast energy. Of course he does. Okay. So he's only going to need to take one prize now. That's so frustrating. I don't think we've won this. I don't. But damn it, did we try. Puts pressure on my Tapu Lele. He doesn't see our way of winning. Guzma wins him the game. So, how many Guzma has he played? He's played three. He has played three. Um, we have to hope that he can't get rid of three cards out of his hand he, he can't draw an extra card and that is so not going to happen I can't even rule of evil twice he'll knock out my own Oranguru uh, we miss counter catcher that's game that's game I can Ultra Ball to stun some cards actually. I could put this down. No, we'll put this one down. Ultra Ball discards one, two cards. We can grab. Ah, oh, we can't grab anything though, that's the issue. I need to hit Counter Catcher. Only have two cards to hit Counter Catcher with. We need to rule of evil twice. If I rule of evil once, get energy. We miss count. That's game, isn't it? Yeah. Get my opponent a well played. That was super close. It was super super close. Had I got the counter catcher there, maybe we stand more of a chance because we can then choose to fly and flip instead. But we didn't get it. Never mind, never mind. Gonna look for one more game. And we see probably a Rayquaza deck. And we like playing against Rayquaza decks. The Delmise is an issue. Like I said earlier on when I thought it was coming up against Rayquaza. The Delmise is an issue. However, let's see what this is. I would like to go first. Thank you. Uh... I was going first, you might think like you just want to keep attacking, however, 
stopping him from evolving, like like just giving him. He has, he still could attack turn one. However, he's very unlikely to attack turn one if he is Rayquaza. Um, so putting his evolution behind your attack is still better. And we start Sneasel with not a lot else. <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay. It is Rayquaza. It is Vikavolt. He does have plays. Um, I'm going to keep the choice bands. I need to just Cynthia this. This sucks. This really, really sucks. Um, I keep the choice band there because there's a good chance we see... Um, oh, really? No Coco. <laughs> uh, there's a good chance that my Tapu Lele can come down and actually knock out the Rayquaza. So... We, we could keep that around and just leave that play open to us. Whereas, really evil, it's, it's not going to really matter too much if he's got the choice band on or not. So, it, it would do 90 damage to it, but that's not so bad. So, we'll see. See what my opponent manages to do here. He gets Pokemon Fan Club. Is he just going to get raised? Is he just getting two raised? That'd be cool. Nope. Delma is and Grubbin. I suppose he doesn't really know what deck I am right now. He doesn't realise I'm spread. Weevil can come down. We could just do 60 damage to the Rayquaza here and that would be not so bad. We're trying to punishments up. That, that could be nice. Do I want to attach a DCE to this though? Not really. Ideally we can get into Coco and double colourless energy so let's just leave that play open. And we actually do get into that so that's pretty cool. I'm just going to set all this up. I'm just going to set all of this up because this is all good cards. We all want all of these cards down. And we're going to retreat and we're going to do 80 damage instead of the 60 we were going to do with Rule of Evil. But we have plays. Shrine of Punishment is going to add up some more damage. Really the Delmise is the most important card for him. He has to treasure these things. because <laughs> Treasure. Um, because the Delmise is going to really do some work to my side of the field and there comes a Tapu Lele nice, is he actually going to bench that there you go, okay I'm happy to see the Tapu Lele come down a Volkner nice so he's probably going to get Vika Volt this turn and at that point you will start knocking out my Tapu Cocos however there is a chance I can knock out with Lily, because I'm going to be able to Lily for six new cards, assuming I can get rid of my top deck. So, let's see what we can do here. Hopefully we just draw into something like Choice Band or an Energy, that would be cool, like a, a unit Energy. And then that makes the, the play a little bit easier. But look at all the abilities coming down onto the field now, we've got one, two, three abilities already. Surely he'll have to draw at least drop at least one more Rayquaza during the match, you would think. This could be it here, actually. Is he going to drop another one? Oh, please, please play that. Yes, here we go. Okay, Happy Fun Time has started. This is awesome. Loses a Vika Volt in the process of getting an energy onto the field. Did he miss it? He didn't have energy. He didn't have energy. This is even worse for my opponent. A strong charge is going to find him a grass energy. Oh, we need to spread this turn. And he only has electric energy in hand. Tempest GX. Wow. Have your 10 cards, buddy. You're in a much worse space than me. And I'm going to show you what how much fun we can really have here. So Tapu Lele, we are going to bench. And then I need six new cards. I want one energy card to go into Rule of Evil Weavile. Which we find. Of course we find. And we're going to do lots of damage right now. We need to spread out the damage though. Like it's, it's so much better to spread out the damage in this situation. Because we do 240 damage spread. 
Whereas if we just try and attack his Rayquaza, we're not going to do enough. Look at the amount of damage on the field already. We're like three turns into this game. The field blower comes down. Going to get rid of my Shrine of Punishments, which you know what? Fair enough. He's going to be able to Dragon Break, and he will take a knockout. That that's a given at this point. However, we have Rescue Stretcher. We have Nest Ball. We can Lily for a bunch of new cards. We can take a knockout again here uh, with our spread, and then also put pressure onto these two Pokemon here. These are our two ways to win this game. And he just scoops up the game. That's how we beat Rayquaza. Look how easy that was. This is such a fun deck. So that was Tapu Koko Weavil, guys. How awesome is this little deck? No Lele. Nice and budget. The only expensive card here you're going to see is Shrine of Punishment. And really, like, there's nothing you can do about that. There's always going to be some sort of expense when building one of these decks. But I'd rather... I'd rather be putting out to you guys to buy something like Shrine of Punishment because if you get your Shrine of Punishment, they're so versatile. There's so many decks right now that are playing Shrine of Punishment because it's such a nice card. And it makes cards like Tapu Koko, Baby Lele, Buzzwall, and even the Weavile's just so much more dangerous. Being able to hit, like, Evil Admonition for 150, 180 with the Choice Band... The Shrine of Punishments gets the Buzzwall GX. The the Return Shrine of Punishment gets 200 damage. It, like, it, it really just starts to pile up all the damage on the field. And the Rule of Evil. This is possibly my favourite card in the deck. Being able to just spread out all of that damage across the board is so, so nice. Tapu Koko is one of my favourite cards. Like, it's so, so fun. Being able to just spread out all these damage, all this damage counters, is just so, so fun. And, like, it really piles up. He's got free retreat. It's a DCE to attack with. It makes it so simple. This is genuinely one of my favourite decks in the format right now. I have played a slight variant of the deck in Poke Beach um, for their monthly tournament. I didn't do so well round one, but uh, I've gone on to round two and tomorrow night i think we're playing tomorrow night so once that's done i'll, I'll get back to you listen to the podcast and i'll let you know how we got on uh, but yeah this is awesome this is really really awesome anyway guys i'm gonna get out of here thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed this video please leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think the next deck video should be i've got some decks to record today but after that i'm open to suggestions anyway thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time Bye bye